Welcome to this Good Friday edition of uh, Cartooning Live, uh, Live Cartooning Lessons with Dan Letha. My name is Dan Letha, and um, today we're going to be drawing uh, a couple special animals that will help us reflect on and remember what we're, what it is that we're celebrating this time of year. Those of us that are Christians, that believe the Bible, that uh, know what Christ has done for us. This is a very special time of year. And so today I want to draw some images that would help uh, help us remember those things. And um, so I'd like to encourage those of you that are joining me to, to make comments and make your presence known. Let me know where you're from, or if you're watching this as a recording, you can still put that uh, those comments down into the, uh, the comment section of the video. So that would be much appreciated. And uh, before we get going, I am going to give you a sneak preview um, about something I've been working on. And uh, nobody outside of my family has seen this yet. So this is a very special unveiling. Um, uh, but before we get there, hey, happy, uh, happy Good Friday. Thank you. Um, let me uh, let me do this. I'm going to uh, switch on over to my Photoshop. There we go. So, all right, I have a couple things to show you very quickly before we start drawing today. And uh, the first one is a truth jabs that I did for this um, this last week or this this week. And so uh, I just wanted to kind of promote another thing that I'm working on. Um, I do this once a week. It's my Truth Jabs cartoon. It's kind of an editorial cartoon um, with a Christian message, Christian worldview message. And of course, this uh, this time I'm pointing out uh, some, an aspect of the, uh, the resurrection, uh, calling it uh, the best empty promise in the history of the universe. And you think about it, Christ made a promise uh, in Matthew 17 that he was going to rise from the dead, and he went and he went and did that. He kept his promise, and so um, the tomb was empty. And so I call that for for fun. I call it an empty promise, the best empty promise that there is. All right, so that's the the truth jabs that I did for this week. And then here's a, pro, a project that I'm working on. And uh, part of the reason I'm showing this to you is that uh, while well, I want you to to see something that's coming. And uh, nobody that I work with has seen this. Carl Kirby, um, Juan Valdez, uh, Wade Wacker, no, no one has seen this. So they, they don't even know what this is yet. And I've been doing this on my off hours. So after hours, I've been creating this. And yes, this is supposed to be me. Um, my question for you is, what do you think this is for? Okay, there's a specific reason I'm, I'm doing this. And so if you know what I do for Reasons for Hope, think about those projects. Think about this drawing right here and uh, give me your comments and give me your guesses. And hopefully it won't be too long before you'll see the reason why I'm drawing this drawing. All right, so today's drawings and I'm gonna increase our drawing board size today. Um, so let's maximize that. And uh, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drawing a, um, one of the animals we're going to be drawing is a lion. And so as we've been doing in our lessons, we, uh, we start tracing first. And what I want to do is kind of break the, the, the lion's face down into different shapes that we can recognize to, um, to use when we do our, our drawing of the, of the lion here in a little bit. So... Uh, one of the things I'm going to find first is the, the triangle for the nose. So that's an easy shape. And then there's another shape right here for the muzzle area, I guess, the end of the nose, the mouth. Okay, and then there's um, that shape right there that comes down kind of like an upside down Y. And then um, he's got his little chin tuft there. There's also some very... Um, important lines right here on the top of the nose or on the, well, on the side of the, the muzzle. So let's pay attention to those. And then the, uh, the eyes for the lion kind of go like that. And so we'll be paying attention to that, those, um, 
those shapes for sure. And then, um, then the shape of the face of the lion inside the lion's mane kind of goes something like that. All right. So again, just uh, some analysis here, trying to, uh, and then the just the overall shape of the mane is something like that. And because the mane really doesn't have a, um, you know, the, the nose is more of a specific shape. The mane is really big and fluffy and there's more leeway to, uh, to do different things with the mane. So we won't be so specific with that, but um, I think that's, um, that's gonna kind of do it for our, 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 our sketch, our analytic sketch. So let's, uh, let's shrink that down. And one thing that I noticed about this photograph reference that I'm using today is that you don't really see the ears of the lion, so we're not even going to worry about drawing those because we don't see them in the in the reference. But if you uh, if you want to draw along and you want to draw some ears on your lion, feel free to do that. I'll shrink that down there. All right, and then um, let me label my layers here so I know what I'm doing. All right, so we're going to start out with, and I want to just continue using my red pen here. And we're going to draw him on the, the, the right side of the screen. Um, let's, let's start out with that, uh, that big shape for the face. Kind of got that big arch, kind of the, goes around the forehead, comes down the side of the face. And then it sort of goes like that. If you draw through the, the chin and, and uh, the muzzle area. So that's what, kind of what we start out with there. And then thinking about where the center is, I'll draw kind of a line there. And then um, let's draw that muzzle circle. So there's that uh, circle for the muzzle shape. And then um, I'm gonna draw the, the line for the eyes, it goes right across there, all right? And then let's draw the top of the nose. I'm just trying to orient shapes and get the spacing for some things, all right? And then the nose triangle goes down there. And we're going to go down like that, and then the mouth goes off in that upside down Y. All right, and then if you want to add that fluff for the chin, again, we're just drawing the, the basic shapes in, and then we'll ink over the top of this and put in the details. All right. So why on Good Friday are we drawing a lion? Hmm, something to think about. And uh, so if you have any ideas about that, you guys can weigh in too. Uh, let's draw a, line, a dot there and a dot there. And that will help us make the line. I'm going to do that one again because I can. All right. So that's the one line for the kind of the bridge of the nose. And then that one right there. Okay. And then to get the eyes in, the eyes both start kind of low right there on that bridge of the nose, and then they curve around. All right. Do the same for the other one. Now the, um, the reference that we're looking at, what we've uh, traced is, um, the lion's not really looking straight at us. I'm actually drawing this a little more straight on. So I've adjusted it just a little bit. Uh, but then the, the, the line, the eyes, let's see, sort of about like that. And then something like that. There we go. And, um, and then we can um, 
start filling in that shape for the for the main. Again, you don't have to be so specific with that because that's just this big fluff of hair. So this big lion. All right, and then we're gonna draw a few more guidelines in on our on our drawing that aren't in the sketch. So he's got these kind of eyebrowish sort of bumps up here. And then the uh, lion's eyes, the pupils. I'm gonna draw that right there. It's kind of a majestic looking guy. We got the detail for his nose right there. I'm kind of curious, did anybody think that uh, because this was Easter related that I was going to draw bunnies? <laughs> um, I'm not, uh, not a bunny guy for, uh, for this time of year. And then we're going to get some of the flow of that mane. Just kind of get uh, an idea of where that hair direction is going. Actually, I think you can see the ear a little bit in that reference, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. Okay, now I'm going to um, make that uh, reference sketch, the, the preliminary sketch that I've done. I'm going to make that more opaque. I'm going to take out my black inking pen, and then I'm going to start drawing on top of that. So if you used your pencil for what I did in red, um, then you can take out your marker too, and you can start inking over the top of your pencil drawing. So let's kind of follow what the nose does there. Anybody have any guesses why we're drawing a lion today on Good Friday? There is another animal, by the way, to follow this one. And it'll give us a picture. Lion's got kind of a lumpy uh, side of the mouth area where the whiskers are. And this comes down. I thought about using a picture with uh, with the mouth open. The, the roaring lions just look so cool. All right. And then that, that chin has that fun hair that's just kind of spread out there. Then if you want, you can put in the whisker like these dots that kind of follow the shape of the, the muzzle back. There we go. And then these lines right here, the back. There we go, looking good so far. And then, um, then there's that area, the, the lion's eyes are so cool looking. If you start out with the inside of that line and get where it goes down to the nose type area and then curve it up and follow the top of the eye around. And then um, go on the inside and finish the bottom of it. I think that's probably the best way to do that. All right. And it kind of continues down on the inside. It kind of continues down. All right. And then and we can draw in the pupil. Again, I like to leave a little dot in there for like a reflection of light. Now my uh, my pupils are a little bit off there, so I want to move this one over a bit. I don't want our line to be cross-eyed. 
There, okay. Looks kind of like he's looking up a little bit. There we go. And then um, and you can kind of add some more detail. And then the, that furry eye ridge, or I don't know what you call it, but it kind of goes up like that. And then they've actually got like a design of their fur that kind of follows the bottom of the, of the eye shape. So you can draw that in too. And then for the where the main meets the face, we'll kind of draw lines. We're not going to draw a containment line so much, but we'll use the fur in the main to kind of frame the uh, the face of the lion, and where the the main hair ends. All right. Anybody have any fiction books that uh, use pictures of lions as a kind of a, a symbol of Christ? I can think of one that we've uh, listened to quite often on road trips and such. Hair is fun to draw, so I'm going to draw that out like that. Again, if you're drawing along with me, you don't have to draw my exact lines. And I'm gonna scooch this over a little bit because my you can't see that. Okay, there we go. I've got these palettes on my uh, my drawing board, digital drawing board from Photoshop, and they uh, they kind of get in the way a little bit. In the program that I'm using right now, you guys can't really see that so much, but there we go. We've got our majestic lion. Big, big mane. All right. I think that pretty well does it for the lion. I'm just drawing the face of the lion today. Although, um, well, well, we'll add a little bit more here at the end. Okay. Now there is one other animal that we're going to draw, and it's um, not a lion. It's mentioned with a lion a lot sometimes, although I think the, the scripture that people are kind of referring to actually is more of a wolf and a lion. Um, or I'm sorry, a lamb and a wolf in scripture. But um, lion and lamb are often mentioned together too, so I thought I would draw a lion and a lamb today on Good Friday. And um, the lion is actually the result of what Christ did. Um, there's a, a verse that uh, I'm going to refer to here in a little bit. But let's get rid of our reference now. And I'm going to make our sketch go away. And then we're going to move our lion over here. But we're also going to make that. So yeah, I'm going to label that lion inks. I'll make that go away for a little bit and then um and then we're gonna pull out our other animal which is a lamb a little lamb we're gonna draw a lamb so we'll put the those two together when we're done here and i'm not going to color them today but uh you can think of the lion and the lamb on good friday now the lamb is e an easy fit for why would I draw a lamb today? Uh, again, let's trace the trace the face of the lamb real quick here, and that's got kind of overarching curve like that for the top of the face, and then then the shape goes down and then round like that, and then the eyes of the lamb have kind of a line that goes like that off the side. And then another line there, and then you draw the eye in. So I'll try to keep that in mind when I draw that after a bit here. And the ears depends on which 
which uh, reference you're getting. Some of the lamb references for photos are big floppy ears. So I could try to fool you and say, we're, we're going to draw an animal with big floppy ears on Easter. What do you think it is? And some people might have thought, oh, bunny rabbit. But nope, it would have been a lamb. All right, so then the, um, in the nose area, let's see, sort of a oval right there that kind of covers everything. And then the nose shape for the lamb. Something like that. And it goes down and then And they have a little smaller chin. So, all right, let's, uh, let's take our sketch and then uh, put that up there for our reference. We move our photo down here. So, again, it's good to break those those things down. If you look at a photo and just try to draw the photo, um, yeah, you could do it, and it, you'll get better at time. I think it helps your brain figure things out better if you trace over the top first and then and then use that as a kind of a practice run all right and just like i said break down those shapes and i think you'll get more mileage out of your your first practice tries so, all right so we uh we started out with that curve up on top make sure i've got my own layer here it's got that curve and then the lines came down here. And then a smaller curve at the bottom. All right. And then um, we we'll draw the ears coming out. And then there's another line at the top. It's kind of that support portion of the ear. And then that line comes right down there, and that line right there. It's kind of nice to have a system for some of this. All right, and then um, then those eyes too. Let's draw a line, kind of goes across like that. And then, then the eye line that uh, we started out with. Goes like that. And then the uh, that oval for the muzzle area. These shapes that you figure out ahead of time just help you with placement. So a lamb, let's see, a lamb on Good Friday. Well, what did um, what did they do with lambs in the Bible, particularly lambs that were were considered perfect, flawless, lamb, spotless lambs? They, uh, they were highly prized, but they were also used for something very, very important and very sad, really, um, because we live in a sin-cursed world and God wanted his people, the Jewish people, to be thinking about the, the seriousness of sin and that um, God was going to be providing a sacrifice for sin the ultimate sacrifice, his son, the Messiah that they were looking for. Um, he wanted them to practice a picture of that sacrifice. And so they, uh, they would sacrifice lambs, among other things, shed the blood of the lambs. And then um, that was a reminder to them of the ugliness of sin, the shedding of blood that was required that God talked about someone uh, down the road would uh, would shed his blood once and for all and he would be called the Lamb of God in fact uh, John the Baptist in a famous verse that I have on my other screen uh, John 1 29 it says the next day he saw Jesus coming towards him and said behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and so lambs may be cute and may be nice to think about and, and all those types of things, um, but they have extra special meaning when 
they remind us of our Savior. And uh, and so that's why I'm drawing a lamb on Good Friday. That perfect lamb of God was sacrificed, and no more sacrifices are required now because of the final payment that, that no one can ever top or add to. Jesus paid it all. And so this lamb... This sacrificial lamb is a picture of, of what Christ has done for us. So we do other things too as a reminder of Christ's shed blood and his payment of sin on the cross. We take communion and, and uh, so, so that's why I'm drawing a lamb today. So we're going to we're just going to fill in the, those dark eyes of this lamb. Leave that little reflection of light there. And uh, there's, if you've ever been to the Creation Museum, there is a video that they play called The Last Adam. The Last, uh, that you've got to see that if you haven't seen it. And there is a, a use of um, an actress playing the... Mary, the mother of Jesus, and and how they picture the lamb and her remembrance as a little girl of uh, watching that lamb that was sacrificed and how it it always broke her heart. And then later on, she had a son named Jesus. And she, uh, she, she talks about how he was to be a lamb. And it's just so touching and so moving. Um, when I was at the Creation Museum and when I worked for Answers in Genesis, I am not exaggerating in that I saw that video hundreds of times. And I never got tired of hearing Mary, the actress that played Mary, say her part. And there's also a Roman guard in there that was very powerful as well. I loved seeing that video. So I would encourage you to uh, to watch for it too if you ever go to the Creation Museum. All right, well, we're, uh, we're getting close to our time here. So I'm gonna finish inking our, our lamb. And then th this lamb is a little big compared to the lion, so I'll be changing the size of the lamb too. But um, and they're uh, they're woolly and, and fluffy. So again, in in our drawing exercise, from an art point of view, I'm hoping that that uh, this tracing and looking at the basic shapes, and then looking at the the tracing drawing that I've done, and then drawing it based drawing your drawing based on that. Is something that's very very helpful for you and um, and that will help you to draw other things in the future all right so lamb inks I'll label that layer and now we'll uh, we'll take this and we'll shrink it down a little bit because I want to put these two animals together and uh, so we've got our lion inks and our lamb. Let me overlap those. I'm going to have to do something there so you can tell the difference between the two of them. All right. So in Photoshop, I'm just going to take and uh, use my selection tool. And I'm going to create a shape underneath the inks for the lamb. And then we'll just fill that shape with... Uh, Oops. with white and then that lamb will pop out there okay so so here we are we're looking at um, a, a lamb and I read that verse already that talks about uh, what John the Baptist said behold the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world Good Friday we talk about um, here I'm going to put myself back up on the screen here so Good Friday, we talk about uh, Jesus' sacrifice, that he died on the cross for our sin. 
And it would be a very, very sad day if that was where it ended. That Jesus died and, and then he was just dead. But there was a, a victory on the cross because he paid for our sin. That's a very good day for sinners that repent and receive that free gift of salvation from Jesus. Um, so it's, it's a sad day. It's probably the saddest day in the history of the universe. But it's a good day, too, because sin was taken care of. And so Jesus... That lamb of God, that sacrificial lamb, that once and for all final sacrifice lamb paid the price for us. And so we, we've drawn a lamb here. And then afterwards, um, because he rose from the dead and he conquered sin and death, um, lot, the, the Bible refers to Jesus as a lion. Um, in, uh, in the book of Revelation, I get that verse here too in Revelation 5, uh, 5 through 6. Well, I'll just read verse 5. It says, And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Well, Jesus is the lamb for sure, but he's also the conquering lion. He's he's the king of all. And uh He's our King Jesus, and so we love him. We celebrate him um, at Christmas time when he came to this earth and kept that promise back in Genesis, and then that promise in Genesis was also kept in our celebration of of Easter, Resurrection Day, and Good Friday. Um, so praise the Lord that we have a victorious Savior. So I hope that this lesson, this this little drawing lesson, is more than just drawing a, a couple animals that you might happen to like, but that there's some some deeper meaning here. And uh, thank you for joining me today and uh, hope that you'll join us next time uh, for these live cartooning lessons on YouTube now. I used to be on Facebook, but uh, we've moved this over to the Reasons for Hope YouTube channel. So like and subscribe, follow us and give us input. And, uh, and so we're very thankful for our, our, uh, our, our viewers and, and listeners and supporters. So pray for us and uh, we love you all. And uh, let's, uh, let's stay bold in proclaiming the good news, the message of Christ and his, his gospel and his love for all of us and the payment for sin. So have a great resurrection day. God bless you.